All right, it's Monday. Hey! And we're going kind of budget on Monday. Are we? We are, just because I felt like... Old crap. Oh, no, come crow. on. We've not, we've done it as a comparison twice, but we've never given it its own episode. Okay, its own freaking, because the bottom shelf matters. That's right. Not all bottom shelf is equal. This is a, uh, the bottom shelf matters. Uh, by the way, welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. I am a uh, level three whiskey sommelier. I'm a sexy, sexy dude. Formerly known as the, the Grand Master Mooch Extraordinaire. Yeah, but then he killed the spirit animal. Punched him right in the Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so Old Crow, yeah, so Old Crow is a budget Kentucky yeah. straight bourbon. Okay. What's the, now budget, what do you mean by budget? What, what's the range here? Uh, we're talking... Budget, budgets are always low Under prices. $20. So the range can go from... Under $20. Really? This is yeah. About, this is about as budget as budget gets. Yeah, under $20. Okay. Unless you're in some, like... Like I remember, I remember I had to go to a family reunion in Arkansas, yeah. and we were in a dry county. Mm -hmm. And so my dad and I got in the van after we got there and drove to the edge of the county. Mm -hmm. And of course, on the edge of a dry county, there, on a highway, there's always a liquor store on the other Just side, right there. Yeah, and we go in. Ours was on Crumley Road, and their prices were insane for the cheapest whiskey you've ever seen in your life. Just because. Because people are like, eh, what you gonna do? <laughs> this is in Arkansas. Uh, obviously 40% mm -hmm. because of this budget. But on the nose, man, this is, this is pretty nice. I like this one. This one, even for a, but usually a budget sort of invisible. This one is like, no, that's bourbon, mm -hmm. right? Now keep in mind, this is Kentucky bourbon. This is uh, Sun Beam Suntory owns Jim Beam. Mm. I don't know how I didn't think of that. Caramel and, and uh, caramel and brown sugar. Now this is not. It's On named after a guy named James Crow, who was unbelievably influential. Not Jim Crow. Yeah, not Jim Crow. Uh, unbelievably un influential in the origins of bourbon history. Uh, he did science on barrel proof and how long things should be distilled for and how they should be aged. I mean, he was he was a nerd of the nth degree. Whiskey nerd PhD. And when he died, he was a skilled distiller. As a matter of fact, he was so highly regarded, he regularly made whiskey for other brands. Hmm. Kind of like a modern day, uh, what's the guy, the Sir Richard Patterson? Yeah, but, but he was an actual distiller too, not just an authority on tasting. Oh. Right? Okay. He made the way. He was a scientist. So he was He was more of a scientist than probably most of the people working on <laughs> today, mm -hmm. including us. When he no, died... Did, did you just undermine our whiskey science? Well, we're not sciences assistists. Whiskey scientists. Oh, well, that we definitely are. Yes. Yeah. I have 11 PhDs in whiskey science. Yeah. Where did you get them? The printer. <laughs> <laughs> so James Crow, Scottish immigrant, moves here, uh, moves to Kentucky, starts to sling whiskey. He's a badass. He pioneers a whole bunch of shit that's common knowledge today and common practice. When he dies, there is a fight over who gets to use the name Old Crow whiskey or the name Crow in their whiskey. And he goes back and forth and finally it gets one by one company gets bought and bought. So now we're drinking apple and cherry on the taste. What we're drinking is a tribute, but no one has any idea. All the recipes were lost. Mostly cherry. No one has any idea if what we're tasting is anywhere near what he was making. Mostly cherry, bit of oak, bit of apple. Uh, the brown sugar I was getting is less so on the taste. What we know evidently is we know what his mash bill was, but we don't know his distillation recipe. So if we're talking- This is effectively budget Jim Beam. So again, if we're talking in, uh, comparables within the price range and prices are always going to be very local, but comparables for like 20 damn dollars, right? For 20 damn dollars. Mm -hmm. This is a respectable enough whiskey. It's not life changing. Dude. I buy that all day. I get the typical candy corn. I get the slight musty notes you get from a bourbon. There's a little bit of a weird aftertaste. It's like uh, funky a, is the wrong word. It's like a thin um, bur uh, bitter. Yeah, from the wood. Slight thin. Yeah. Uh, Richard Shaper, what has been the most difficult thing besides paperwork? Mm. Bringing your distillery from a pipe dream to a reality. Uh, what has been the most rewarding part thus far? Well, you guys have more videos on the process of getting the distillery off the ground. Uh, I got my two right off the uh, top of my head. So the most difficult thing? For me, patience. Yeah. It's taken so much longer than even my longest projection of what I thought it might take. And whenever there's an outlay of time, 
It's also an outlay of money. Yeah. <laughs> that was not expected. Yeah. At the level that it hit us at. Now, the most rewarding, honestly, oh. that's going to sound super cheesy. No, it is. But it's the tribe. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think if we had just launched it ourselves, right. we would have had a very different distillery. Yes. Because of the delay. Absolutely. Uh, things developed. Yep. And then ideas percolated, yes. and we launched, and we are now opening with a whole new plan from what two years ago sure. we had talked about. So I agree. Thanks to you guys. I agree with both of those things. Mm -hmm. um, will you guys have videos of the process getting the distillery off the ground? So already in the Patreon, they're getting multiple videos. Yeah, in the Patreon, you get daily. constant updates. Mo As a matter of fact, Small, Halle, my little, wife, yeah. said. Uh, I have to watch the Patreon lenses because Rex is the only one who will show me what's happening at the distillery. Because <laughs> you never tell me anything. <laughs> so those are just uh, small snippets here and there of things that have happened day to day, hour to hour. Yeah. Um, but once everything's in place, actually going into the back room uh, and having videos about the process. We will be doing that. We're going to be doing that um, on you know the Tribe channel. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the decision points for various things that we're working on. Yep. The decision points are going to be offered up to the Patreon to for a vote story. to decide, hey, what are we doing with this And we've got com one coming up really soon uh, of our own whiskey. Yeah. So, really soon. So, uh, I did a recent update on the, on the, the, the two, for the, the people on the Patreon saying I got a call from you mm -hmm. about the, 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 the potential for the sourcing guy. Whiskey, yeah. whiskey. I didn't even say sourcing guy. I didn't even yeah. say sourcing guy. Okay. I said whiskey quests. Yeah. In the future. Oh no, he's, he's at gonna what be great. point do we feel really strongly about that and it's locked and we can go into detail because we're gonna start slow. Mm -hmm. Right, start with we got a few things uh, in our hands right now. We can start opening up some options, but the more we do this, the more and more options open up. At what point do we say that's a lock and we can go into the details? I, we can start. He said we could start tomorrow with him if we wanted. So we just need to come up with our first plan. Can it's I? soon. It's soon. It's really soon. Right. Uh, what's the best prank you ever played on Daniel since starting the channel? Here's the thing, Brad Hackett. Uh, if, if Daniel was a prank kind of guy, my life would be like 80% easier. I'm uh, not really. Because prank. just that's, that's, it, it's, it's, it's synonymous with shenanigans. Yeah. And so for me to prank Daniel and him not to prank in return, it's effectively me being a bully. I know this. <laughs> yeah. I still do it because it's fun for me, <laughs> but I also realize there's a limit to how often I can go to that well. Yeah, I don't do pranks. I, I wish he would. I don't like them. I wish he would. I did it in high school, and I've got a bad memories from what happened afterwards. I won't call the police on you. Yeah. I won't chase you down the street with a shotgun. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying I'm that not That did doing. legitimately happen. I appreciate a good prank. I have a scar. See that? Yeah. That little sickle shaped scar on my elbow? Yeah. That's from a prank when I was a senior in high school. So that's the scar that caused you to be boring. <laughs> yeah, sure. Gene Yeagley, the third Daniel, what is the best whiskey to soak your harmonica in uh, when playing the blues, classic rock, or jazz? Ah, uh, well, classic rock, it's just going to be uh, any bourbon. Cha. Jazz, uh, Boone Hobbin 12. You know what? I missed <laughs> miss that. The streak. Had an amazing streak. It's I over. missed that because I was thinking about trying to make it, as opposed to just yeah. you putting it go with your instincts. Man. All right, this, old, old crow for the budget. No, I would totally like a camping trip or cocktails. Yeah, yeah, cocktails. Oh, oh yeah, camping trip for the budget. It's respectable yeah. for the budget. Absolutely. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with, with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.